Hello, welcome to Prosy Technologies. I am Prakash. In this session, we're going to see one of the important concepts that is widely used in data warehouse. It is change data capture. It is a technique that detects and records the changes made to a database and also it replicates them. Everything is automated here, no scripting needed for maintenance of the history details. It is supported by SQL Server Management Studio. This is also supported by Azure only when the CDC enabled table is migrated from on-premise to cloud. Let's see an example so that we can easily understand what CDC is. Let's assume we have created a master table EMP which has three records but it does not contain any date or time column. We are going to create a CDC on this table. Then automatically CDC creates a history table employee underscore CT which has the details of the master table. It also will include a unique column for this history table and also it creates another column like operations where it specifies what kind of operation it is. It is a insert or update or delete. And also it includes the timestamp for this. We are going back to the master table. Here we are going to insert a new record. So this new record will be added as a new record in the history table. So here the operation would be like I, which is a newly inserted with a timestamp. So we are going to update an existing record in the master table. So this will be like it adds a new record in the history table, whereas the operation would be like after changes. So the previous record, this will be changed to before changes. Now we're going to delete an existing record in the master table. This will have an entry as a new record in the history table whereas the operation would be like deleted. This is how it creates the history table in the CDC. For all these DML operations, no scripting of SQL query needed to capture these changes and also no need to create audit tables for this purpose. A CDC will take care of all these things. Let's jump into the demo and see how CDC works. So now we are logging into SQL Server Management Studio. We are in SQL Server Management Studio. Let's connect to the on-premise server. So we are logging with Windows authentication. So before connecting to it, so make sure that in the services, the SQL server and also the SQL server agent is running here because both are mandatory here. So this is actually disabled. So we are going to enable it. So change it and start it and also make sure that SQL server agent is also running which is mandatory for CDC. So now connect to it and let's check SQL Server Agent. Yes, it is enabled and we can see that there is no jobs inside regarding the CDC. So we will talk about it later. So we are going back to the databases and we are going to create a new one with the name db underscore CDC. It has been created. Now check whether it has CDC enabled for this database. This is the query. So exhibit this. And we can see it is not enabled. In the second step, we are going to apply CDC on the database. So for this purpose, we have a stored procedure. So let's execute the stored procedure to create a CDC on this database. So it threw an error. It is expected. It is saying that it could not create CDC on this database because we have logged in with the Windows authentication. Let's check that. When we connected to this server, so we have logged in with Windows authentication. For CDC, it should be a SQL Server authentication. You can see here, the owner is like a Windows authentication credentials. So this has to be changed to SQL Server authentication. So we have a store procedure execute this to change the owner to SCA that is SQL Server Authentication. It's successful. Now check the properties of this database. Now it has been changed to SQL Server Authentication. So now execute this stored procedure to apply CDC on this database and it's successful right now. So let's check the status in the query. It has to be 1. Yes, it has to be changed. Next, in the third step, we're going to create a table 
so you are going to create a table and insert few records into it so make sure that the table should have a primary key so cdc is enabled only when the table has a primary key that is unique records so execute this so the table has been created now insert those records it's successful let's check the records the table has records now next in the fourth step we are going to create CDC on this table level. So we have stored procedure for this. So give the details of the table that is employee's name. So execute this. So what it does is it uh, creates two jobs and it enables it. This is why we need SQL Server Agent. Now go back to the Object Explorer and refresh the server. Then in the SQL Server agent, we can see that there are two jobs running, the capture and the cleanup. This is what is responsible for creating history of the employee changes, I mean table changes. So go back to the database and check for our table, the employees is available and also check for system tables where CDC tables will be created. Let's see the details of the newly created CDC tables. The first one is the captured columns. This will have the list of columns of the CDC applied table. In our case, there are four columns. Those will be shown here. Then the change tables. If you apply CDC on table, those lists will be shown here. In our case, employees is the table which has a CDC. So it is showing only one table. Then it creates a history table for that particular CDC table. For example, for employees, it has like employees.ct. So this will have all the changes of the DML operations. So currently we don't have any DML operations. Let's see in our demo later. Then DDL history. This will have the DDL changes. For example, if any alter changes for that schema, those will be shown here. If the table has any index details, those will be shown in this index column table. And this is a very important thing, time mapping. In the employee CT table, it does not have any details of the time. So those time details will be available only in this time mapping table. Now we are back to the query. So we have created CDC on this table. So let's check the status. So using this query we can check. So you can see that uh, the CDC has been tracked. The indicator is 1 now. So now we are going to check the master table and also history table. So the master table has 5 records. But the history table does not have any records because we did not do any DML operations. So for this purpose, in the sixth step, we're going to do DML operations on the master table where we're going to insert a new record, going to update an existing record and also delete an existing record. You can see that the update record will be the one, the deleted record will be the two. So let's execute this. Three rows affected. Let's check the employees table and you can see that the first record has been updated with new salary and the new record has been added, the sixth one, and also the second record has been deleted from the master table. Let's check in the history table. So this has the changes which are made for the master table or reflected here. Let's repeat the DML operation again so that we get more records in the history table so that we can easily understand. So we are going to create a new record that is user7 and we are going to update the third record and also we are going to delete the fourth record. Let's execute this. The records affected. Check the master table and as you can see the changes. So now execute the history table. So it has more records now. Now let's understand the details of the history table. Let's segregate this column list into two parts. The first part is the operation column. So this will have the details of the DML commands. For example, if any insert, update, delete happens, those details will be shown here. Where one indicates the deleted record, the two indicates the insert record, the three indicates the changes before the update, the four indicates changes after the updates. The second part shows the details of the columns and the records of that master table. To elaborate more details, I have formed a query. Let's go to step 7. 
and this is the query which I have formed. So this give more meaningful information about the history table where the one indicates the deleted, two indicates the inserted, three and four indicates the before and after changes. I have joined the history table with the time mapping table so that we can even see the uh, time details of these changes. Let's execute this query. In the result, we can see that the operation indicators are shown here and its subsequent DML operations were also shown. At the end, we have added the timestamp of these changes. So in this way, we can capture the changes of the records using CDC. We have come to the end of this session. Hope you have understood what CDC means. Please check for this below video description for all the scripts that we have used in this session. Thank you. Support me by subscribing to my channel for more videos. Have a great day.